boulders. I'm in Otago on Hampton Beach, and these boulders are amazing. They're smooth and rounded and seem to have been plonked here from nowhere. I wonder, how were these boulders made? Clay. Rock. Goo. Concrete. And sand. Back. Um, rock. And volcano. Mud or concrete. Rocks. Sand. And rocks and water. Stone dirt. A volcano. Concrete. Lots of little rocks and stuff. Mud. Uh, it's great that happened and it kind of went into that shape. Well, they all smashed and then they couldn't find, so they just put them all together and they're all glued. A Māori legend has it that the huge boulders represent the food baskets that were washed ashore when the great canoe, Araite Uru, was capsized off Shag Point. The smaller rounded boulders were the water gourds, and the misshapen boulders, the kumara, that the canoe was carrying. Oh, all this talk of kai is making my puku rumble. Time for some local kai moana and riwai, I think. Kia ora. I don't know where these boulders came from, or how they were made, but I know one thing for sure, they make great tables. What have we got here? Oh yes. Fresh ika and chips, my favourite. Liberal dose of lemon juice. Hey, what have we got here? There's a wee reaction. Something in the boulders is reacting to the lemon juice. It's making it fizz. Let's see. Well, lemon juice is an acid, and some minerals react with acids. I know, the mineral lime, calcium carbonate, that reacts with acids. Ah, so we know one thing about these boulders, they contain the mineral lime, calcium carbonate. Or maybe they're just, just great big rock limes. No, one of the best ways to find out what a rock consists of would be to smash it open and take small fragments into a laboratory to analyse. So... We're not gonna do that. No way. We're here to protect nature. And we're just going to have to use the best tools that we have. Our eyes, Fatu. The power of observation is a mighty one. The Moraki boulders are septarian concretions. How's that for a big word? Yeah. What does it mean? Well, it means that these rocks were formed by sediments concreted together. See these big yellow veins here? Looks like heavy duty glue. And this substance, calcium carbonate, sort of works that way. It cements everything together. How did the Moraki boulders become so rounded? Well, how are other things rounded in nature? River stones can become quite rounded. These stones here can be the stones at the bottom of a riverbed. As a river flows along, the force of the current is strong enough to move rocks. And as the rocks roll, they roll over other rocks chipping off the rough angles and jagged bits until they're as round and smooth as a baby's beach ball. Snowballs become rounded in a different way. As you roll a snowball down a slope, it picks up more snow. It becomes bigger and bigger and rounder and rounder. So that's two ways that things become rounded in nature. But this Moraki boulder here is an even more amazing trick of nature. There are boulders like these all over the world. And in some places of New Zealand. Not just here in Otago. Well, they're not exactly the same, 
but some of them are made in a very similar way. Imagine this is the ocean floor 60 million years ago. It's all very sandy and silty and muddy. The tide swirls back and forth, and water carrying the mineral calcium carbonate, that's lime, and other bits and pieces flows through. Well, some of that lime drops to the ocean floor, and it's attracted to certain solid objects it starts to crystallise around them. Well, eventually, over thousands of years, the ocean floor grew deeper with all those sediments. It became really thick. And because the crystallisation of the minerals happened equally in all directions, the Moraki boulders grew into spherical shapes. <laughs> like this. If the crystallisation had not happened equally on all sides at the same time, the boulders could have looked like this, or maybe like this. This is Susie Cato reporting from inside a Moraki boulder. Yes, you heard it, inside a Moraki boulder. And it took thousands of years for this boulder to form. It was only after the outer surface had become hard and brittle that the inner core began to dry out. And that caused shrinkage and cracks to form. Well, the calcium carbonate, the lime, crystallised inside those cracks to form these veins here. It would have taken about 120,000 years for this boulder to go from a soft, squishy thing to this solid, hard rock. So, what are these boulders doing here if they were formed millions of years ago at the bottom of the ocean floor? Imagine the possibilities. Perhaps a prehistoric whale sucked them up and then spat them out on the beach. Or maybe an alien spacecraft hovered into position and teleported them down onto the beach. Or what actually happened is about 40 million years after the boulders were formed, the Earth crust where they were sitting rose up out of the water. Then, wind, water, and general weather conditions started to erode the cliff face. It exposed the mudstone and the boulders. As the boulders were exposed, some rolled down onto the beach and broke open. Others remained intact. One day, maybe not for hundreds of years from now, but one day the boulders here at Moraki will be gone. They'll be eroded away by the tide and the weather. But while they're here, it's our job to look after them. Just as good scientists do. I'll see you later. to smash one open and take small fabric fabric Broadcasting fee.